What's up YouTube, Russ here. Welcome to another episode of The Trail Hunter. And today I'm going to be going over everything that I had in my pack for my Everest base camp trek, which I've just got back from. It was a two week trek with a six and a half kilo base weight. Uh, I'm gonna show you exactly what's in this backpack and also just take everything out so I can show you how I packed it and uh, everything else that's inside. So uh, yeah, let's get on with the video. Two weeks ago, I started my trek to Everest Base Camp all the way from Lukla going up through the Kumbu Valley, uh, all the way to Base Camp and then ending up in Kalapatar. Altogether, the trek took me eight days uh, and then about four days to get back. Okay, so to start with, this is my backpack. Um, altogether, it was six and a half kilos, so it's an ultra light setup uh, for the Everest Base Camp trek. Most people take anywhere between 10 and 15 kilos with loads of layers, loads of stuff, but you literally just don't need that, especially with a guide and if you're trekking uh, anywhere between September and November. This is the HMG 2400 Windrider backpack. It's 40 liters, waterproof. It's been very well designed and specifically made for long distance trekking. It is definitely the best backpack that I've ever bought and hands down my favorite backpack at the moment. Um, I've used it all the way from uh, Indonesia, traveling around there for a month and then coming all the way to Nepal. Uh, I did all of my base camp trek with this backpack, uh, as well as my South Downs Way 100 mile through hike with this backpack and it was absolutely fantastic. This backpack is ultra light and ultra strong. Uh, it comes with a huge front mesh pocket and two really big side pockets. Uh, two really huge uh, hip belt pockets that you can actually fit your iPhone 8 Plus in and loads of other stuff. Um, on the back, it's got a really good set of straps, uh, a little whistle on the sternum strap, um, a really thick hip belt. Um, in the inside, it's actually got two uh, aluminium rods that just give it a little bit of extra strength, but this is a frameless backpack. One of my favorite features about this pack is that it's got a roll down top so that you can just cinch it down on the sides, making it even more waterproof. And this backpack is so strong that it's put up with so much. Uh, I will be doing a full gear review of this backpack on its own uh, in the coming future. So uh, there should be a card up there just somewhere around here uh, when I've actually made that video and uploaded it. So if it's there, do give it a click. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just start on the outside and explain to you what all of this gear is. Uh, so first up we have the water bottle that I used. I actually started off with a, uh, a little plastic standard one liter water bottle but it's not very good for holding hot water. So I bought one of these at Namche Bazaar. It cost me about two or three quid, BPA free, dishwasher safe. So you can put boiling water in this and it's got a really good seal. So when you tie it up, uh, you're not gonna be left with uh, leakiness in your sleeping bag. So what's really good about this is it doubles up as a hot water bottle. So at night, fill it up with boiling water, put it in your sleeping bag, You'll have a really good warm night's sleep and in the morning you've got some cold water because it is very cold up there in those mountains. Next up on the outside, on the left side pocket, I kept my uh, trekking pole. This is just a black diamond aluminium trekking pole. Um, I actually very rarely use this pole. I don't actually like trekking poles too much. They're a little bit cumbersome and I like to have my hands free for my camera and everything else. But when it gets really rocky, you're actually gonna start scrambling and bouldering up uh, big rocks when you're on your way to uh, Gorakshep and base camp. So having a trekking pole is a very good idea, although I didn't use it very much. On the outside, I just wrapped some uh, gaffer tape on the outside so that I can, if I need to make some repairs to my sleeping bag or my backpack, just in case, I've got some tape there to use for that reason. So yeah, nice little trekking pole. Also in the left side uh, pocket, I had my sunglasses. So these were really cheap, got them in Tamel. I don't know how official they are, but uh, they come in a nice little case with a microfiber towel. Uh, so that was a really good handy thing to have. Uh, make sure that you get sunglasses that are polarized because when you're up there in the thin atmosphere, the sunlight is so white, it's unbelievable. I literally can't, tell you how bright the sunlight is up there. So a su pair of sunglasses just like this, nice and cheap, really light, with a case is an absolute must for your Everest Base Camp Trek. I use these all the time. So yeah, that's sunglasses sorted. Next up on the main outside pocket, I had my map. Um, 
Because I had a guide, I didn't really use this that much, but just in case we got stuck in a whiteout or some kind of freak weather happened, I had a map, I've also got a compass in one of the hip belt pockets as well. So carry a map, and also it allows you to know exactly where you are on the trail. And yeah, if you're with a guide, you're not gonna use it that much, but definitely good to have a map of the Everest Base Camp Trek. Next up, I had a little woolly beanie, um, definitely another must. Uh, I only actually carry things that I absolutely know I'm gonna need, and when you're up there, at Gorok Shep, it got down to minus 17 degrees, so you definitely need to bring a nice warm woolly hat. Usually I have like a sun cap with a little roll down back to protect my neck from the sun, uh, but I ditched that and just went for the beanie instead. Okay, let's turn the pack around and have a look at what's in the hip belt pockets. So, these hip belt pockets on this backpack are absolutely massive. Uh, this is my compass, which uh, hopefully I wouldn't have to use with my map, but in case I needed it for some crazy weather, I could use that with the map and orientate ourselves and get back to wherever it was that we were needing to get to. Uh, next up, I had a really small, lightweight uh, headlamp, which was uh, really handy, although the batteries do really drain on this one. On the way to uh, Pak Ding, I actually ran out of batteries and had to switch them. Um, to be fair, I hadn't actually changed them at all since I started using it, but uh, I got through two sets of batteries on the uh, Everest Base Camp Trek. Uh, next up is my Swiss Army knife. Um, I actually didn't use this once on the trek, although if you needed to have a pair of scissors or a screwdriver or you needed uh, like a magnifying glass to start a fire or something like that, at least I had it. So I didn't use it, but definitely a very good tool to have. Um, the trekking company that I went with, they actually recommended that I bring one anyway. The likelihood of me needing to use this was very slim, but say I needed to like cut a shoelace or something like that, this would have come in absolutely fantastically handy. Okay, in the left hip belt pocket I was carrying, let's go first with uh, hand sanitizer, a definite must, obvious reasons. Um, some eye drops, it gets very dusty and I've got some allergies so I definitely keep some eye drops on me at all times at hand as well. Uh, my inhaler, so I do suffer with very mild asthma because um, of the dust and things like that. Um, I always carry a, my inhaler on me just in case I really need it. It's just a personal thing. Uh, next up was uh, lip balm, just a, a little stick of Nivea Original. Just because it's really dry, you're walking a lot, one minute you're in the sun, then you're in the shade, and your lips do get really crap really easily. So this is a must have for me. Okay, so that's it for the hip belts and everything that's on the outside of the backpack. Let's go inside and take a look. So I'll put this back down on the floor, uncinch the sides and the top, and roll it up. So in the top of my backpack, I always kept my extra layers because when you're hiking, you're gonna really get sweaty. Uh, I saw people like going up these mountains in like all of their uh, like down jackets and everything and they're just sweating and that way you're gonna lose more water more quickly and you're gonna dehydrate super, super fast. Okay, so before I delve into the backpack, I'm gonna explain to you uh, a little bit more about what I'm wearing because uh, in the top of the pack, there's my extra layers. So let's talk about the clothing. I was actually wearing exactly what I'm wearing now. So uh, on the top layer, I've just got this one base layer and nothing else underneath. Um, it's just like a long sleeve base layer. And on the bottom, I had the exact same kind of as a set, the bottoms for that base layer. And then I'm wearing some running shorts with pockets on each side and a zippy pocket on the back, which is really handy for just carrying a few extra bits in. Um, I had some really uh, warm woolly socks on my feet. And for footwear, I was wearing these La Sportiva kind of trekking trail running trainers. Um, I never wear boots anymore because they're too heavy on your feet. When you're swinging your feet as you're walking, you're just gonna drain more energy. Boots for me actually cause me to have a lot of blisters. They make my feet sweat, so I always go for trainers. Uh, I don't actually know if these trainers are the official ones. I bought these in Tamel. Apparently a lot of uh, hiking gear in Tamel is just cheap kind of knockoff copies, but I'll tell you what, these actually did me absolute wonders on the Everest Base Camp trip. I didn't get a single blister. My feet were absolutely fine. They were breathable. They had a Gore-Tex layer in case it rained on the front so that I could actually keep my feet dry. Um, these were just a fantastic pair of kicks. On the bottom, the tread of the sole is a uh, really good grip, so it's really good for clinging onto those uh, mountain rocks and things like that when it gets really slippery. I very rarely uh, slipped at all wearing these trainers, so I highly recommend that you wear 
uh, a lightweight shoe like this instead of a boot because your feet are just going to be so much more comfortable and you'll be able to hike further with it as well. So yeah, La Sportiva uh, Trekking Trainers. I don't know the name but I'll put the link in the description with everything else. Also on my person I was wearing this Garmin Forerunner 35 watch uh, which came in handy for counting those miles, look at my elevation and my heart rate and things like that so a really handy gadget to have on you. Okay guys let's delve into my backpack and I'll show you guys exactly how I packed it and what's in there and we'll just pull things out and I'll go through it. So let's open the backpack. First thing that we've got in here is just a really lightweight um, synthetic fleece. This cost me about eight or nine pounds from a shop in Tamale. Kept me super, super warm, um, really lightweight. Uh, it's got zippy pockets and everything. So uh, a fleece is really good to have, uh, especially when you're um, sitting around and it starts getting a bit chilly. Next up was my uh, North Ridge Down Puppy, which I've had for absolutely ages. Um, I've taken this absolutely everywhere with me. A really good down puppy, lightweight, not too thick. Um, but when you're sat around and it starts getting a bit chilly, even in the sun at those high elevations, and I'd put my fleece on, I'd put my down puppy on, it's always at the top of my backpack, so when I'm hiking again and I start getting hot, I can just stuff it back in there and boom, and you're hot, you're cold, and you can sort everything out um, temperature-wise really easily. Next up, uh, I took a spare t-shirt, so I'd always keep this at the top as well, so uh, if this base layer wasn't quite enough, I could just stick a t-shirt on on top of it, and um, yeah, I was just very conscious about how hot I was, how much I was sweating, how much fluid I was losing through my sweat. So uh, keeping all of your extra layers at the top of your backpack because you're gonna really need to switch them out quite often on that trail. As soon as you get into the shade, it gets really cold and then you get in the sun, it gets really hot and then the higher you go, the colder you get. So yeah, all your layers that you need at the top of your backpack. That's what I uh, prefer to do. Next up, I kept my Patagonia Torrent Shell rain jacket. This is a lightweight, uh, water-resistant, breathable shell. It's not completely waterproof, but um, it really does wonders for keeping the wind off, keeping light drizzle off. Uh, if it started snowing, then I'd put this thing on. Um, I think I actually only wore it once or twice for about 10 or 15 minutes at a time when I was on the entire trek. So um, definitely good to have something that's a bit more waterproof uh, and to keep the wind off as well. Okay, so in the back of this backpack, there's like a mesh so that you can put like a water bladder in there, and I never use a water bladder, but what it came in really handy for was keeping a folder of all of my important documents in. This is just a little really cheap uh, plastic folder that I bought from a little off-license in Tamel, uh, and inside I'd keep everything in this uh, kind of Ziploc bag, but it's actually got little holes in it now, but uh, I have been traveling with it for a few months, but all of my important stuff went in here, so let's have a look in this uh, uh, folder now. So that's the little Ziploc bag that actually everything was in. Uh, inside this plastic wallet I kept my actual wallet with my bank card, my ID and everything like that but you never really have to use it. There's one uh, ATM on the trail and that's in Namche Bazaar. If you want to get some money out in Lukla then you actually have to go to the bank at about 9.30 in the morning, give them your passport, they take a copy. It's a bit of a rigmarole getting money out in Lukla but when you get to Namche that's the only uh, ATM available on the entire trek and I used it uh, once on the way there and once on the way back but yeah I just kept my wallet in here so that I knew I, if I've got my backpack it's in there so that's my wallet. Uh, next up I kept my passport in there so when you're on the trail you're going through checkpoints you're going to need your passport sometimes I'd keep it in my uh, in my little money belt that I had on me on the front which I'll show you uh, very shortly but yeah that's my passport. I usually keep all of my really important stuff in one of these kind of little Ziploc bags just to keep it dry. So yeah, that's my passport. And next up was just some photocopies of my passport, uh, some trekking permits that were just acquired throughout the entire thing, uh, flight tickets, uh, helicopter boarding pass, a lovely photograph of me and my family when I was a wee nipper, there you go, that's, that's me right there. Uh, this was the doctor's note that I got, so I could uh, send it back to my insurance company, so that's just something else that I acquired, really handy to have one of these things. And the boarding pass for getting back to Kathmandu, so yeah, always bring a plastic wallet. My throat gets so dry when I'm making these videos, it's ridiculous. All right, so let's get back into the backpack. I usually keep everything in their own little separate dry bag. So I have one for my wash stuff, one for my medical stuff, one for food, one for my clothes, and one for my sleeping bag. So uh, let's dive into those now. So first up, uh, this is like my medical slash uh, water purification pack. So if we go inside, this is just like an OEX 
a cheap little dry bag with a roll down top. Inside I had a few packets of electro bion kind of energy drink. I didn't use one of these once, I literally lugged these all the way up there with me. Um, but I had them just in case, I wish I had used one on the very last day going up to Kalapatar. Um, because I literally just was so drained going up there. Um, I actually, because I never used them, I just forgot I even had them. So it's up to you if you want to bring stuff like that. Wish I'd used it, but I didn't. Uh, next in here is just a tiny little nano first aid kit. It's got some plasters, it's got some antiseptic cream, it's got some bandages and a few other bits in there. So uh, it's coloured red, so you know where to find it, but I always keep it in this. I know where to find everything in my backpack because I packed it. But um, yeah, just a really important thing to have. Always bring a first aid kit. So I took this titanium spoon. Uh, never used it once, but I just thought I'll bring it with me anyway, just in case there's no cutlery or something like that. Because I just never knew, but um, no need to bring one of these. Wherever you're staying, there's always knives and forks. Um, but yeah, titanium spoon. Next up is my Soya Mini water filter. A really amazing little gadget, but I didn't actually need to use this once on the entire trek up to Everest Base Camp. Because all the way up there to about Pambache, I was using a really lightweight, uh, just a standard one litre plastic water bottle with cold water in it. You can buy mineral water all the way up there. From Pambache onwards, I'd start using the flask to fill up with boiled water keep yourself warm at night, um, and then you've got purified water in the morning. So sticking with boiled water was absolutely fine for me. Didn't get sick once. Uh, the bottled water was fine, but I actually put purification tablets in that uh, just in case, because you never know if these things have been unsealed or how long they've been sat there, how long it took them to take the water up there. So yeah, don't bother bringing a water filter uh, with you on this trip. I didn't use it once. Uh, with the uh, Soya Mini, it comes with a little plunger so you can backwash it and a uh, plastic straw so that you can have different ways of drinking from your bottle or you can drink straight from the Red River with your uh, filter stuck to it. So yeah, that was my water purification system that I just didn't use. Uh, lastly in this pack is uh, a little uh, pair of tweezers just in case they've got like a splinter or something like that. Uh, really handy to have a pair of tweezers. Uh, so that's everything in this dry bag, so let's move on to the next one. Uh, in the next one, this is basically my electronics bag, so let's have a look inside now. Uh, in the electronics bag, I had my uh, Anker power bank with Qualcomm Quick Charge. Very important, if you get that Qualcomm Quick Charge, uh, your iPhone 8 Plus is gonna charge like woof, really super quick. I could charge my iPhone 8 Plus within about an hour to an hour and a half from this power bank, and I could charge my phone and my camera, probably the phone about three times, uh, and the camera, if I wasn't charging the phone as well, I could charge the camera about twice. So uh, yeah, really good to have your power bank. Next in here was uh, part of the case for the camera, which I'm actually uh, using now to record this, but also on the camera was like a little holder, which I put around my neck, um, just so I could have my camera to hand. So uh, yeah, that's also part of the uh, camera setup. Uh, the camera that I'm using now is a Sony RX100 Mark V. Um, definitely the best vlogging camera I've ever bought. Uh, hands down, really fantastic. The only problem is it doesn't come with a microphone input. Uh, what the camera sat on is like a little gorilla pod thing. Really like super cheap knockoff one that I bought uh, out in Indonesia because my last little mini one broke. But um, yeah, I took that gorilla pod with me and I always stuck that in the front of the pack uh, in the big main mesh pocket. Okay, so next up in my electronics bag was another little tiny mesh bag with a tire on the, uh, on the end. And what I'd keep in here was all of the wires for each of my devices. So uh, here I have the little charger for my iPhone 8 Plus. As you can see wrapped around it, there's a little elastic band and I always use elastic bands for just tying out all of my uh, electronics uh, wires just so they don't get tangled and it is possibly the best travel hack that I've ever picked up. Always bring a set of elastic bands that you can tie around all of your wires and keep them in one little place. Next up is the charger for my camera. What's really good about the Sony RX100 is that it charges straight from a little micro USB straight into the battery so you don't have to have like a big mains outlet kind of power brick with this camera. Uh, you can just bring one little wire and charge it straight from your power bank so that's really handy. Uh, next up is the charger for my Garmin watch. Next up in my electronics bag was the spare battery for my Sony RX100. Uh, some spare batteries for my headlamp. Uh, some spare micro SD cards so that uh, if I run out of space I can just quickly change those. So you've got some spares. Next I have the mains outlet plug which I use to charge all of my devices. It has an iPad or tablet 
uh, USB there so it charges super super fast. I literally use that for almost everything. And then it has two ones uh, just for phones and normal devices. Also around the edge I've got some extra elastic bands uh, tied to that so I could always find my elastic bands and they didn't float around in one of these bags. So yeah, another little travel hack for you. Next up I did take like uh, a travel adapter just in case um, some of the power outlets uh, weren't for the UK, but literally every single power outlet uh, on the way up to Everest Base Camp in all of the tea houses, they had these kind of power bricks that had multi, multiple kind of ways of putting them in. So I was able to actually use my UK version the entire way um, to charge all of my devices. Another thing I should mention about charging devices is the further up you go towards base camp in each of the tea houses, the more expensive it is to charge all of your devices. It costs about 300 rupees per hour per device in a lot of the places. I think when you get to Gorakshep, there's no way to charge your phone. It's too busy, there's not enough power outlets, there's not enough electricity. So taking a power bank uh, with you is a definite must um, and just take some extra cash in case you need to charge up everything. But I found that um, on the way up the entire trek, charging my devices, I was able to do that up until like Pambache slash Dingbache. And then on the last few days when we got to Lobache and Gorakshep and base camp, I just used my power bank and there was enough power in there still to charge everything. Um, so yeah, the whole uh, of my playlist for the entire trek going up to Everest Base Camp, I just had one uh, charge on my power bank and then everything else I was able to charge on the way. So don't worry too much about electricity on the way up there, you're gonna be absolutely fine. So that's electronics, moving on through the backpack now. So next up is my toiletries bag. So inside here, very, very simple. I had uh, a little tiny brush which I've actually broken off the uh, the handle just to save some space and some weight. Uh, I had two packets of these uh, little tissues. Uh, next up I had some sun cream. Didn't use it once, um, I'm wearing all these layers and my, my skin doesn't burn too easily so uh, yeah, had uh, no issues with sunburn. I saw some people were wearing a lot of sun cream on their nose. Yeah, and it did get a little bit prickly but I didn't use sun cream, but I recommend you take it with you anyway, just in case. Uh, next up, I usually took with me just one roll of toilet roll. You can buy toilet roll in every single one of the tea houses on the way up there. Don't worry about bringing a absolute shed load of toilet roll with you because one, you're not gonna get through it quickly enough between two tea houses. Two, it's pretty cheap, and three, it saves on weight. So just bring one with you, you're not gonna need any more. If you can, try and pick the ones with, uh, without the hole and the, the reel in the middle, because uh, that just saves on weight and space and you can scrunch this right up. So yeah, that's toilet roll, used for obvious reasons. Right, next up in here, this is the uh, little Ziploc bag that carried all of my medicine and my little toothbrush. So I'll go through all of that with you now very quickly. So inside here, little tiny toothbrush. I actually snapped the handle off of that again just to save some space and weight because when it's in there, it just doesn't quite fit in the top. So snap that off. The little tiny tube of toothpaste. This is actually the Nepali brand. It's actually quite spicy. Then I took a toothpick, which also has some dental floss on it. So if I needed to just, you know, do the obvious thing, Thing. at least I had that. In terms of medicine now, this is really important. So the entire trek on the way up there, I took with me two of these blisters of Diamox tablets. They're actually a Zolomide brand, and the reason why they've changed the brand for these Diamox tablets is because a lot of people were misusing them as uh, a drug to get high with, so they changed the brand. I don't know if that actually worked, but um, yeah, Zolomide tablets, I, I asked my guide and everyone on the trek and they said these were absolutely fine. Um, I actually, as you can see, only used one. I don't know how I managed to get all the way up to Everest Base Camp with just one uh, Zolomide tablet, but um, I got all the way to Base Camp absolutely fine, didn't need to use one, and then when I got to uh, Kalapatar, that's when I had to take one, because the altitude just hit me. So. You never know how much of these you're gonna really need to take, but I took two of these blisters, and in each one there's 10, so I took 20 tablets just in case, but I only had to use one in the end. Next in here was some uh, codeine and sulpidine uh, tablets. Um, didn't have to use those once, but if you get a really splitting headache, uh, these can really help, so codeine tablets are uh, a really good thing to have. Next up, I got some like Sudafed tablets, they're like, good for if you get sinusitis or if you get a cold or a flu and you get really congested, 
Uh, didn't have to use one of these ones, but uh, it's best to be prepared. Next up was diarrhea tablets. Um, didn't have to use one of those once really, luckily. I was super lucky on this trek. I didn't get sick once in terms of stomach upset. Um, the food there was a little bit weird. You just gotta be really careful about what you're uh, eating, but uh, luckily didn't have to use one of these. Uh, water purification tablets, I took a few of these blisters of these. On the way up there, I was drinking mineral water from the bottles, and I've heard that you can actually get quite sick from drinking those uh, because you don't know how long the bottles have been sat there for. You don't know if they've been reopened and the seal just hasn't been broken, but that you can actually open them without breaking the seal. So. Just to be safe, when drinking um, bottled water, bottled mineral water, I would put one of these tablets in each uh, litre. It makes the water taste a little bit like pool water. It was really like kind of chlorine-y, but um, yeah, I think these actually did the trick and yeah, probably one of the reasons why I didn't get sick up there. So take some water purification tablets, um, even if you're gonna be using uh, mineral water on the way up there, so yeah. A couple more bits in here. So I did take uh, a couple of kind of paracetamol tablets uh, because I didn't need something quite as strong as the codeine, sulpidine uh, tablets, but yeah, paracetamol. Last but not least, these are uh, antibiotics for food poisoning. So if you get food poisoning and you can't stop your diarrhea uh, after a few days, then you have to start taking these. Um, luckily as well, I didn't need to use those. So all of this medicine I took up with me uh, and didn't really need to use a single thing apart from one Diamox tablet and the water purification tablets. Okay, so back inside the bag, I have my clothes bag. This is actually the dry bag that my sleeping quilt came with, but it's a little bit too small to keep that uh, down sleeping quilt in, so instead I use it for my clothes bag. Inside here is a microfiber towel. I got to use this twice uh, in Namche Bazaar, and that was literally it. So unless you're planning on washing every day, to be honest, like some of the hotels actually have towels in them, so maybe not an absolute necessary thing to bring, but I bought it anyway. Next up in the bag was a pair of wind trousers. I only used these up at Kalapatar because it got so freezing cold um, in the night that in the morning when we were hiking up there, it was down to like minus 17, minus 20. So a pair of wind trousers, really good. These aren't waterproof. It didn't rain once while I was on that trek. So I didn't need some waterproof rain trousers, but these really came in handy for the uh, seriously cold weather. Next up in my clothes bag was one spare set of underwear. You are gonna get dirty on this trek. Don't bother bringing loads of spare changes of underwear. You just don't need them. It saves on weight, saves you hassle. Um, I was absolutely fine with two sets of underwear on the entire trek. Uh, and when one pair got uh, quite sweaty, I just swapped the other one out halfway through the trek. So yeah, one spare set of underwear. And then I bought with me the socks that I was wearing, as well as two spare really extra thick woolly socks just like this, because you are gonna need them when it gets really cold. Your toes are gonna feel absolutely numb. When I got up to Kalapatar, I thought I was gonna get frostbite on one of my big toes because I wore the socks that I uh, went up to Kalapatar with uh, the next morning. They were slightly damp from when I slept in them. And uh, what that did was it caused the front end of the sock to freeze in my shoe. So um, what my advice would be is when you're going up to Kalapatar, especially if the weather's really cold, just make sure that you leave yourself one set of these socks completely and utterly dry and completely unworn for that day because when you get up there your feet are going to get so so cold my toe was so numb for about two hours i literally thought i was going to get frostbite and lose it so uh, socks really important i wouldn't bother washing your socks while you're up there just because when you're up there it's so cold and there's so many people trying to do the exact same thing and you're huddled around these little kind of wood burners in the middle trying to dry your socks. The last thing you want is to wash your socks and then the next day them still be wet. So uh, just bring like two or three uh, spare pairs of socks and you should be absolutely fine. Okay, so we're moving on. Next up in the backpack was my NeoAir X-Lite sleeping pad. Um, it's got Mylar on the inside so that it keeps you really warm at night. Uh, I only actually had to use this once at Gorakshet. I actually shared a room with a guy uh, in Gorakshet who in the middle of the night decided to wee in a bottle and then drink his own urine from the bottle which made the room absolutely stink. 
So I couldn't sleep in there. About two o'clock in the morning, I went into the dining room, blew this little bad boy up, uh, and managed to get a couple more hours sleep on the floor in the dining room um, before everyone else started bowling out to get to Kalapatar in the morning. So uh, bring a sleeping pad. You don't know how busy it's gonna be, especially at like Lobache, Gorak Shep. There might be absolutely no rooms left, so you may have to resort to sleeping on the floor in the dining room. So yeah, a uh, sleeping pad really comes in handy. Moving on, in the backpack next up is uh, this kind of Dyneema pod from Hyperlight Mountain Gear, which is designed specifically for the backpack that I was using. So you can see that shape, that entire shape actually fits directly in the bottom of my backpack. And inside this Dyneema pod, if you unzip it, this is where I kept my uh, Katabatic Gear uh, Palisade 30 degree Fahrenheit uh, down sleeping quilts. Uh, which I found was absolutely fantastic in those really cold temperatures. Uh, I used it every night and then put the quilts on me that were actually come in the room with your bed. And uh, I found I got a really good night's sleep most of the nights, apart from in Gorakshep, uh, when that funny mishap happened, but uh, yeah. What's good about a sleeping quilt over a sleeping bag mummy style kind of thing is that on the back it actually opens up. So. Uh, if you get too hot in the night, you can kind of stick your leg out, you can unravel it, you can tie this thing around your neck and then have your arms out free. So what's really good about that is uh, you just get a little bit more versatility out of a sleeping quilt versus a sleeping bag. So most people would bring like a really big kind of sleeping bag. This thing really kind of packs down really well, really lightweight, uh, really versatile. So uh, definitely recommend this sleeping quilt. Okay, next up, there's only a few things left in here, which are my flip-flops, which I literally used once. I only used these uh, in the middle of the night in uh, Namche Bazaar. Um, I literally, every other night, because these shoes are actually so easy to put on, I was actually able to just tie them up once and slip them on instead of uh, looking for these and getting my feet really cold. So. I personally don't think you need a pair of flip-flops. Uh, if you had a good pair of shoes that you can just slip on, absolutely fantastic, you should be fine with those. Um, plus, if you're wearing socks and it's really cold, it's really hard to get flip-flops on when you're wearing socks. So I wouldn't bother bringing these at all, just uh, an absolutely useless bit of kit. And lastly, uh, another useless bit of kit that I bought, which I only used once, was a hot water bottle. I was actually really worried about the temperatures getting below freezing and being really cold in the night, so I bought a cheap little lightweight water bottle with me. I used it once in Panbache because it got absolutely freezing that night. To fill this thing up, it cost me about 400 Nepalese rupees, which is about three to three pound 50. The problem is, once you put the water in here, you can't drink out of it because it's just gonna taste like rubber. It's probably got loads of chemicals in it. So don't bother bringing one of these. Buy one of these water bottles, fill that with, up with hot water again, and uh, you'll, you'll be absolutely fine. Uh, yeah, an absolutely useless bit of kit, which I wish I didn't bring with me, but I did. Uh, it did keep me warm that night, I'm not gonna lie, but I never used it again. So I was carrying this thing around, um, and yeah, another useless bit of kit. But hey, hot water bottle. Okay, so that is everything that's in my rucksack. This is completely empty now. Um, there's just one last thing I'd like to go over with you, and that is uh, my money belt that I bought with me. So, of course, my backpack had two big hip belt pockets on, which I had for specific things, but I just wanted something that was a lot bigger to put around my waist so I could carry my phone, and I could carry a few other bits. So I'll just go through with you what was in here. So inside this money belt was obviously some money in a little zip lock bag. Uh, next up, I would keep my camera, uh, which would be attached to this case, but obviously I'm filming on it now. But uh, this was big enough to put my Sony RX100 in with this attached to it, so that I could just whip it out, put it on my neck, and if I got fed up with having it on my neck, I could just put it back in here where it was really handy. So yeah, that was another bit of my camera set up. Uh, next up, I had my headphones. Uh, again, I put an elastic band around them to stop, stop me getting all tangled up. Um, so yeah, just put those in there, they were really handy. Uh, next up, I'd keep uh, a pen, which was obviously good for writing things down, obviously. Next up is my iPhone 8 Plus. Um, it was just really good to be able to just put that in there. Like, the hip belt pockets are big enough on this backpack to put an 8 Plus in there, but I just prefer using the money belt as an added extra. And also, I could put my uh, passport in there as well. So, when you're going through checkpoints regularly, especially up through Namche, 
uh, it was good to have my passport in this money belt as well. Okay folks, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. All of the products that I can list down in the description below will be listed there with links on where you can buy them, so go check that out. Also, around here somewhere there's gonna be a card to a link to my Everest Base Camp Trek playlist which you can watch all the way through if you like. Or there's also a video where you can watch it all the way through without having to skip between videos. Uh, so there's going to be a full length feature video of that as well. Uh, as always guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Do hit that like button if you found it at all useful. Let the Trail Hunter community know exactly how you found your Everest Base Camp Trek what gear you used in the comments section below because we would love to hear from you. Also, do consider subscribing to this channel by hitting that button below for more videos like this and I'll see you guys in the next one.